Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the webinar. Thank you for joining us today. I am Dixie Zitlow, Director of Outreach for the Dibble Institute, and joining me today for this webinar is Kathy Guidry, the webinar organizer. Good afternoon, Kathy. Hi, everyone. Glad to be here. It's my pleasure to facilitate this webinar this afternoon because our programs reflect the need for understanding what a healthy relationship is, what it looks like, and why it's important that we define what domestic violence, dating violence, and intimate partner violence is. Before we begin, I'd like to point out a few housekeeping tips, though. If you experience audio difficulty during the broadcast, please note the phone number uh, listed here or on the link in your email connecting you to the webinar. You can both listen on the phone while viewing the broadcast on your computer, um, or if you're on your computer, and we do recommend that you use earphones while connected to the broadcast. If you have any technical questions, you can send in your inquiries through the question box located on the control panel. We um, will have time for questions at the end, and uh, if your question is not answered during that time, we will be answering you via email. And We have a short 60 minutes today that includes our question and answer and this is being recorded and will be available in our archives uh, early this next week. So who is the Dibble Institute? We're a nonprofit organization, national independent, and we are dedicated to equipping young people with skills and knowledge that they need to develop healthy relationships now and in their future. A lot of times people will ask, so where did that name Dibble come from? Um, well, there really was a Charlie Dibble, and you see the picture of Charlie and Helen there in their later years. Charlie was our founder, and he was an aeronautical engineer, and in his retirement years, he dedicated himself to working with young people. Now, he heard a lot of painful stories from them about their parents and sometimes their own relationship issues. And being a natural problem solver, he searched out solutions and he found that there were really only a few programs addressing relationship issues for the youth. So with the support of his fellow businessmen and some educators, he founded the Dibble Institute. Now if you're interested in more about Charlie's story, you can go to our website and click on About Us and you can read all about our uh, history. Excuse now, me, Dixie. I'm yes. going to turn back to this um, access code because we do have just a couple people that are having difficulty um, okay. hearing the audio on their computers. So if you all will take a minute and look at the number, the 873-567-029, that would be the access code. <clears throat> and you can see the phone number there. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, they're just a couple people. And that people. should also be in their email. Yes, mm -hmm. definitely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All righty. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Now I want everyone to find their control panel that should have come up on the right hand side of your screen I think when you logged in today and find the little hand. There's a little hand there and I'm going to ask a question so that's why I wanted you to find the little hand. So who on this webinar is new to the Dibble Institute? You've never heard of us, you don't really know a lot about us. I'd like you to raise your hand please. And Kathy's going to tell us how many of you really are new to us. Well, it looks like about uh, a quarter of the people today, wow. over 25 people today. Okay, great, great. Well, welcome to the Dibble Institute. And uh, again, always happy to um, welcome new people to learning more about us and what it is that we do. And welcome back to all of those of you who have been on our webinars before, and thank you for, for joining us again today. 
Another question that we're asked uh, about the Dibble Institute is what are your core values? So I want to explain a little bit about that before we get into our material. While we are pro-marriage and pro-stable committed unions, we are not anti-divorce or anti-single parent. Relationships that are abusive, either of self or others, should just go away. We know that kids suffer considerably in high-conflict homes, but all too often a couple will split up for lack of good communication or conflict resolution or other essential relationship skills. And the impact of the lack of these skills often continue throughout their parenting years, even if the parent relationship doesn't last. And when that happens, very often the children will suffer. We know that there are a lot, a lot of heroic single parents out there doing amazing things for their children every day, and we applaud them. And also, we believe that all young people deserve respect, and all relationships can be improved with relationship skills. You will find that our materials can be used with a broad audience of young people, including the LGBTQ youth, and our materials are used in Planned Parenthood as well as church programs. We never assume the gender of young person's partner, and we've written scenarios with input from young people that address all different types of situations. Now, I want to introduce Catherine to you, and then I'm going to be giving you a little background before she does her part of the presentation today. But our guest speaker today is Catherine Hilgren, and a little bit about her. Catherine um, received her bachelor's degree in psychology with a minor in religious studies at Missouri State University in Springfield, Missouri and went on to receive her master's degree in marriage and family therapy at the Adler School of Professional Psychology in Chicago, Illinois. Now currently she is a licensed professional counselor in the state of Missouri and works as the Empowering Families Coordinator at Great Circle in Springfield, Missouri. As the Empowering Families Coordinator, she works with youth at the Ozarks Family Resource Center Emergency and Homeless Youth Shelter, and she teaches two healthy relationship and parenting classes at the Partnering Alternative High School Middle College. Finally, Catherine also teaches adolescent psychology one evening a week at Missouri State University. And we are really happy that she's here today and willing to share her knowledge and experience with us. Now, before we hear from her, um, next slide, please, Kathy. Before we hear from her, let's look at defining uh, domestic violence, dating violence, and intimate partner violence. October, as you many of you know, is National Domestic Violence Awareness Month. And I have heard countless times from teens, as you may have also, that they don't think that, the, the, or ident identify with domestic life violence in their life or situations. Because, they say, we aren't old married couples. And then I say, hmm. So, like defining healthy relationships, um, it's a good idea to define dating violence, domestic violence, and intimate partner violence also. Next slide, please. So on this slide, you'll just see um, the basic definitions. And I want you to kind of look through this. We have violent or aggressive behavior within a home, typically involving violent abuse of a spouse or a partner. Then there's dating violence. Usually we're thinking about teens, at least we are, because that's who we work with here, is defined as physical, sexual, or psychological slash, slash emotional violence within a dating relationship. And this can include stalking as well. 
it can occur in person or electronically and it may occur between the current or a former dating partner. Then there's intimate partner violence. This term intimate is, is key to this whole thing. One of the things we see uh, or that's pointed out through in this definition is that um, in the intimate partner relation or violence when there is that it does not mean that these people are um, have sexual intimacy they could have a different type of relationship but an inter intimate partner violence relationship or violence there is physical sexual or psychological harm that is imposed by a current or a former partner or spouse next slide please so there are some similarities between these um, and many times you'll hear the words interchanged. The similarities include uh, physical, sexual, psychological, or emotional violence. There can be stalking. It can be electronic. It's in a relationship. It's violent and there is aggression. It is about power and control. The similarities include violence happening at any age, any socio-economic, gender, religious, or educational um, situation. Next slide please. Who experiences domestic violence or intimate partner violence? I'm not sure how many of you are familiar with the uh, music video Ordinary People by John Legend but these are some slides from that video and if you haven't seen it, it I recommend it very highly and it's a great one to use with your teens um, in this song and in this music video he talks about how it's ordinary people and different types of families different situations um, different you know types of relationships that are there that experience it it's the person next door Kathy's going to be putting a poll question up now and so um, I'm going to have you answer this question as it comes up. And The question is how many high school students do you think experience physical abuse in a dating from a dating partner? Less than a hundred thousand, less than five hundred thousand, or less than 1.5 million. So just click on your screen and submit and then Kathy will be giving us our results on that. Okay. Interested to hear what you come up with. It looks like as you can see on your screen 63 percent said less than 500,000 so that was the majority. Mm -hmm. Well I like that optimism. <clears throat> the sad news is is that um, nearly 1.5 million high school students nationwide um, experience physical abuse from a dating partner in a single year. Next slide, Kathy. And this impact is huge on our teens today. Um, it is not something that they escape and that trauma is going to carry into so many different parts of their lives. Let's break down that statistic just a little bit more. Next slide please. So that means that one in three adolescents in the US is a victim of physical, sexual, emotional, or verbal abuse from a dating partner. Think of that. Think of three teens standing in front of you and one in those three that is a little unnerving. Uh, or one in ten high school students has been purposefully hit, slapped, or physically hurt by a boyfriend or a girlfriend. One quarter of high school girls have been victims of physical or sexual abuse. And approximately 70% 70 of college students say that they have been sexually coerced. Now these statistics can be very unnerving but we know that there is something that can be done about this. Next slide please. 
the domestic violence, dating violence, or IPV doesn't just affect our teens, but when we start thinking about uh, the impact on children of teen parents who are in a domestic violence or have domestic violence in their relationship, we see this how this um, carries into the future. In an article, Impact of Domestic Violence on Children by the U.S. Department of Human and Health Services, it shows that children who have been exposed to domestic violence are more likely than their peers to experience a wide range of difficulties. And these difficulties fall into the categories of behavior and social emotional problems, uh, cognitive and attitudinal problems, and we find that um, they have difficulty with uh, health issues, they are slower in cognitive development, um, they lack in problem solving skills, there's depression and um, aggressive behavior just to name a few different things. Next slide please. So how does relationship education reduce the risk and foster positive factors? That's what we're going to be talking about today and looking at. There are correlations of reducing the risk and fostering positive factors um, like learning what healthy and unhealthy relationships look like. And this might include um, help them to change the patterns, especially if we're talking about pregnant and parenting teens for their children. Knowing what the danger signs are and how to walk away and what parenting looks like through an eyes of a, the eyes of a child are all um, information that healthy relationship education can give to these teens about their relationships. Using trauma-informed information and programs also allows teens to acknowledge that there is abuse and then learning the information the skills about healthy relationships empowers these teens to make some other choices to ask for help to change the patterns of their lives and help them to see that they are not just a statistic implementing these evidence-based um, relationship education uh, curricula in your program also provides another way and helps them deal with uh, the results of abuse so Catherine, I'm so excited to have you share your good work from Great Circle in Springfield, Missouri, and um, so that we can see what an example of how healthy relationship education is used to address domestic violence. Welcome. Thank you so much. I first want to just say, you know, a thank you to to you and to the Dibble Institute for giving me the opportunity to share a little bit about my experience in working with teenagers and um, in using the Love Notes curriculum, which for those of you are, who are new is um, created through the Dibble Institute. And I do want to encourage anyone who is new, if you haven't checked out any of the curriculum from the Dibble Institute, I highly encourage you to do so. I've been using it for about a year and a half. And I think it's really an amazing tool. It's really well put together. They do such a great job of integrating activities and um, pop culture and all, all sorts of things that really connect to teens and help them um, latch on to this information. So it's been, they're so kind and so easy to work with. I've really, I've really had a great experience. Um, so I encourage you, you all who are new to, to check them out. They're great. Um, also, I just wanted to comment um, on some of the things you said, Dixie, before about the number of youth who experience um, dating violence or abuse. And I just want to say, you know, from my personal experience, uh, as you mentioned, I work in a homeless youth shelter. I also work at a few different alternative high schools. And just in my own experience, I really have met a lot, all, m many, if not most, of the teens that I work with have reported um, experiencing a lot of these things that we're going to be talking about and I'll share some examples um, but it really is a problem um, that they need to be educated about so I just wanted to reinforce that 
And um, so today I will, I know that we're trying to make sure we have time for questions, so I'll try to be mindful about that. My students often <laughs> remind me that I tend to talk a lot, so I will try to be mindful of that, make sure we leave time for questions at the end. Um, but I just wanted to share a little bit about how I work with teenagers and um, how we educate them, because I, I agree it's it's really important and it has a big effect on not only on their life but also on the children they have or their future children. So as was mentioned, I work at um, Great Circle. I'm the Empowering Families Coordinator, and that means that I run a grant-funded program. So if you want to go to the next slide there, the grant that I have comes from the Children's Trust Fund of Missouri, and the purpose of this grant is to provide healthy relationship education and parenting skills information to at-risk teens and also to teens who are already pregnant or parenting. And so with this uh, grant, we created a collaboration with an alternative school called the Middle College. So you can see on your screen there, the Middle College is an alternative high school. It's just for juniors and seniors. It's actually located on a college campus here in Springfield. And just to give you an idea of the population we serve, most of, of our students fall into that, what would be classified as that at-risk population. Um, I have several students who have a background or a family history of domestic violence. Um, a lot of them just don't have good examples in their life of what a healthy relationship or healthy parenting skills look like. I have several who it will be their first, they will be the first one in their family graduating uh, high school and going on to college. We even have one in particular who he is now the fifth generation in his family of being a teen parent and he will be the first to graduate high school. So we have a really, and, and we also have some kids um, as well who are who are really high achieving and, and um, want to go to this particular alternative school so they can get college credit as well as high school credit. So we have a wide variety of youth, but as I said, a lot of them, even from all different backgrounds, um, have experiences with um, this kind of, these relationship issues. And so we really feel excited and passionate about providing them healthy relationship skills. Um, and I have the opportunity of doing a semester-long class that they actually get high school credit for. So I know a lot of people listening probably don't have the opportunity to meet twice a week for an entire semester. But just to reiterate, the curriculum, it's very versatile. Uh, I also do just a one Friday a month workshop at two other alternative high schools. So it can be used in a variety of ways. Um, but just the information is so important because we have so many kids who, who, uh, who need to hear it. Okay, so moving on, our next slide, I went ahead and listed for everyone some of the goals that we have as part of my class. There's a variety of them there. The two that we're focusing on today, though, are numbers two and three. So to educate students on how to recognize and identify warning signs of abusive language and abusive behavior, and then also help them learn how to get help if they are in a dangerous relationship and to educate them about what resources are available. Um, you know, we spend a majority, a, a lot of the time talking about the healthy relationship tools, which are incredibly important, but they also need to be able to identify the problems as well. So if we go on to the next slide, there are three tools that I use in my classes to give them this information. So the first is the Love Notes curriculum by the Dibble Institute. That's what we'll spend most of our time talking about today. But I also like to collaborate with other community organizations and bring in some guest speakers and they provide um, a simulation activity. And so I'll briefly share with you what that looks like. I think it's really great to collaborate. Springfield, Missouri does a really good job, I think, of having community organizations work together. Um, no need to reinvent the wheel if somebody's already doing a good job or has a program that you can take advantage of. It's a great thing. And then finally, we created a student project so that we can see what our students are learning and uh, kind of keep in touch with where they're at. Um, and so I'll explain that to you as well. And you're more than welcome to borrow that idea if you like it. So moving on, we'll start with talking about how we use the Love Notes curriculum to educate our youth. And uh, 
there is an entire lesson about halfway through the curriculum, 13 lessons, so halfway through lesson seven is all about dangerous love. And so we start by playing a game. Uh, as I mentioned before, all the Dibble curriculums do a wonderful job of integrating activities and, and things that make learning fun. So we have this red flag, white flag game. So we split all of our kids up into teams and, you know, they have a red flag and a white flag, as you may have guessed. And what we do with this activity is I will read to them a variety of scenarios. And they will raise the red flag if they think it's clearly abusive. And they'll raise the white flag if it's like, well, maybe it kind of depends on the situation. It might, it might be just fine. And the reason I love this game is because it really gives me a, a lot of feedback as to where my students are at. And it's a great place when you're starting to teach them about this kind of material. It's really great to first identify where they're at, what they're identifying as abusive, what they think is okay, because it helps you teach to them more effectively. So let me just read you, I'll read you two examples of uh, scenarios that I might say to them. So they're split up in their teams, they have their flags, and I'll read something like, um, you are ridiculed by your partner. Your partner makes you feel stupid, makes you doubt yourself. And so right away, I'll have a bunch of students raise their red flag and say, that's clearly abusive. Like, that's not okay. You shouldn't be talked down to. You shouldn't be criticized by your partner. But then I'll also have the occasional student who will raise their white flag and be like, well, if they said something stupid, you should tell them that they're being stupid and doesn't really see that as a problem. And so it's a great way to pause and say, okay, now let's have a discussion about healthy ways to solve a problem or how do you, um, how is, what is an appropriate way to speak to one another and let's talk about respect. So it, it opens up a good dialogue. Another example um, of one that I read, it says, you two or, or you and your partner have lots of disagreements and I'll have several students automatically hold up their white flag and say, well, that's normal. Even in happy, healthy relationships, you're always going to have disagreements. And then I'll have other students raise their red flag and say, well, wait a minute, if you're in a happy relationship, you shouldn't be arguing. Like, you shouldn't have any disagreements at all. And again, opens up an opportunity for us to talk about expectations and um, what, do, what does a normal, healthy relationship look like? And let's start talking about it. And uh, so it's a really fun game. It gets them involved, helps me see. It's a good starting point for us. And then we move on and we start talking about different types of violence. Um, we look at different forms of abuse and provide education about those things, some early warning signs. Um, next, we talk a lot about different resources. Dibble does a great job of including not only um, national hotline numbers and resources, but also websites. And um, we also incorporate local uh, resources that kids can take advantage of. And then again, we use music videos or other pop culture stories. Like right now, with, um, we have all these stories about the football players and actors that are, have been experiencing domestic violence, and they're pretty um, commonly known. They're being talked about a lot. And so it's another way to bring in those topics um, to talk with, with our youth about. But they do a great job of using like the John Legend video. Another picture from our slide here is from a Kelly Clarkson video um, to give them things to connect to. We also talk, definitely spend a lot of time talking about the impact on children. My students, it's so easy for them to explain to me or to give examples of how their parents' relationships have influenced them. I have several students who have had kind of, they share a story of having a revolving door of parent figures coming in and out with their single parent. Or, you know, and they're very impacted by those relationships. And so we try to help them turn that around because I have several who our parents are about to be and say, okay, now this is your opportunity. You know, the reason we're in this class is to help you learn how to make really good, healthy relationship decisions because that all of you, the decisions you make are going to impact your children. And so we talk about that. And then finally, we have a workbook that comes uh, with the curriculum and gives students a lot of time for self-reflection. And we use that since it's a class as part of our assignments for them. And we also help them figure out how to talk to a friend if they know somebody who's needing help. So I think um, now we have a poll question that I wanted to give you guys an opportunity to answer. Is that, do we have a slide for that one? Okay, it says, which of the following are examples of teen dating abuse? It gives you some options there and you can select more than one if you choose. So we have slapping, 
deleting phone or Facebook contacts, possessiveness, refusing to use a condom or other birth control, threatening suicide to prevent a breakup. You should be able to make a selection on your screen. Yeah, I'm going to give people a couple seconds to finish up. Okay. And then I will <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and close it and share the results. Okay. Oh, good. It looks like most people, like it's a pretty even breakdown. Can everybody see, does everybody see that, the results? Yes, yes. Okay. So good. It looks like there's a pretty even breakdown. Hopefully everybody selected all of those. And it can be surprising. Like there are some things that it's hard to tell. Like is that abusive? Is it not? Um, in terms of this question, you know, I have a student just recently who in class we were talking about the idea of slapping. Because usually with, with hitting or punching, my students are like, oh, clearly that's abusive. But just recently I had a girl in my class who said, well, you know, is slapping really that big a deal? I mean, if a girl slaps a guy, you know, she, he's bigger than her, so she's probably not really hurting him. And also, if, she slapped, if he, she's slapping him, he probably really deserves it. Like, he probably did something really bad. So, and just doesn't see it as a big deal and very minimizing um, some of those actions. And again, it gives us an opportunity to talk about, you know, what is the healthiest way to solve a problem? What is that really, in a, is using abuse or using physical violence, even if it's, you know, slapping or shoving, that might not break someone's arm, like, is that really effective? Do people really, does anyone, male or female or child, deserve to have physical harm used against them? And so some kids just, they don't quite identify that, especially if it's been normal to them in their life. Some of those other things, um, we'll put up a slide in just a minute about different types of abuse, and we'll get to look at some other things um, with that. But you guys did a great job in answering that question. Okay, so let's go to the next slide and take a look at some of the reasons, and these are just some of the reasons that I see, I'm sure there's many more, but what are some of the reasons that teens often do not recognize abusive language or abusive behavior and why? Like so, uh, to go back to what Dixie said at the beginning, a lot of kids have a really preconceived idea about what domestic violence is or what abuse is. And they think that's just older married people who have an alcohol problem or, um, you know, that doesn't happen to me. Or they think, you know, it's a the scary and they don't recognize that idea that, hey, it really can be any ordinary person. It could be the cute boy who you like or the person that you're dating. Um, and they, they don't recognize that all the time. Um, another thing, especially with kids, even if they don't necessarily come from it, a background of abuse. A lot of kids, teenagers, have, are struggling with self-confidence. They're still trying to figure out their identity and who they are, and they don't really know how to speak up. I have a lot of girls who say, well, if my boyfriend does this or that, he's kind of pressuring me. Like, they feel pressure to just go along with it. Or, um, and guys, too, like they don't, if they don't know what a healthy relationship is supposed to look like, then they don't know when to speak up or how. Um, also, if abuse was normal in their home, again, they're not going to know what healthy relationship looks like. If a parent's way of showing love, quote unquote love, was by talking down to them or if abuse was common, then that's probably something that's going to feel comfortable to them that they're going to gravitate towards. And again, they might not recognize that as abusive. Um, I hear a lot of kids doing these minimizing statements where he's just doing that because he's jealous and, and that just means that he loves me. You know, he, he goes through my phone or she goes through my phone and deletes all my Facebook, my, all the other males or females out of my phone because they're just worried and they care about me. And when they're in that beginning, you know, puppy love stage at the beginning of a relationship, oftentimes they don't, um, they miss those warning signs or they, they minimize it and they, they don't recognize it for what it is. And finally, the last point on the slide here, it says maybe they're the one who's displaying the abusive behavior. You know, I have to remind myself sometimes when I'm teaching, I often assume, or I, uh, as I'm teaching, that I want to help these people not be a victim. And that's true. That's very much what I want. And sometimes I forget, though, that maybe some of the kids in my class are the ones displaying abusive behavior. And it doesn't mean they're a bad person. It doesn't mean that they're wanting to be really controlling and manipulative. For some of them, They'll say, well, hey, I do that, or, oh, no, what does this mean? And a lot of times it's because they're afraid. You know, maybe they've been hurt in the past. I had one boy in particular who said, I was cheated on by my last two girlfriends. And so I was really scared. You know, he gave himself like three days <laughs> before he started dating somebody else. 
and so naturally was afraid of being heard again and so started going through her phone and, and making sure that he was checking her Facebook and, and who she was talking to and um, for him in my opinion what the, one of the main problems was was him not knowing how to communicate um, in a healthy way or knowing how to be healthy himself or recover and start a relationship with trust so it's it's really important for all students the ones who are displaying abusive behavior and the ones who are experiencing it to be getting this education. Okay, next slide please. So I wanted to go ahead and post on here some different types of abuse. Uh, I'm sure many of you are very familiar with all these different types, um, but I know for myself I'm learning new things all the time, especially um, you can see the definition there of digital abuse. Um, nowadays with so much social media and so much technology and kids are growing up with technology, um, that any time or any way that relationships are happening, anywhere that relationships are happening, there is a potential for a positive interaction and there's the potential for unhealthy or abusive interaction. And so really what I've been talking about just recently with a lot of my students is what's happening online and what's happening um, electronically. So that's definitely something um, if you're wanting more education about this website here, loveisrespect.org, is an excellent website. That's where I pulled these definitions from. They have, do a really good job of explaining all of those things, so you're, I encourage you to check that out if you are interested. But physical abuse, verbal emotional abuse, sexual abuse, even financial abuse. Just recently I had another student who was dating somebody, according to him, for forever. You know, they had been together for about three weeks. And he trusted her. He, he said, well, she was wanting to borrow my debit card. She was just going to go and take my car and go bring home some food. And she ended up going to the mall and spending $1,500 and cleaning out his account and then taking off with his car. And so, again, brought up an opportunity. You know, it's not just adults, but it's kids also who, um, you know, experience and also need themselves to learn um, how to form a healthy relationship and when to start building trust and when to start uh, going deeper in a relationship with, with all those kinds of decisions. So I encourage everyone to just to be aware of what all the different types of abuse are. And on the next slide, I put just a brief list of things that we try to help teens recognize really early in a relationship. That if they can recognize some of these things early on and know what to do or how to respond, then it's going to help prevent problems for them in the future. So I won't all of you guys read through that list there. Um, you know, it's jealousy ignores you when you talk, constantly texting or IMing, things like that, or experiencing any kind of pressure to do something, all early warning signs. On the next slide, um, I just wanted to give you a list of some things that we teach them as healthy relationship alternatives. So as important as it is for them to be able to identify the negative things, um, they also have to know, well, what do I do now? What do I do instead? How do I uh, do it in a better way? And so with the Love Notes curriculum, we cover a lot of different things. That five to one, what that represents is the ratio in an ideal situation, in a healthy relationship, um, there would be five positive interactions for every one negative. So there's always a positive balance in the relationship. Um, we teach them what does a healthy timeout look like? How can you recognize when you're starting to get upset or when you're starting to get overwhelmed? When you take a break? You know, how to do that, how to communicate that, how to come back and use the speaker listener technique, um, problem solving. And then with the workbook, those bottom two points, we do a lot of self reflection. So what are you bringing into a relationship from a past relationship or from your family? Do you know what your expectations are and how do you communicate them? So it's not just about the domestic violence and how to avoid that, but it's also how do you create and sustain a healthy relationship for the future. And that's really what our, our goal is. Okay, so moving on. Um, all that information is mostly covered in the Love Notes curriculum, but I told you I'd share just briefly about some community collaboration that we use in our class. We have um, multiple speakers. These are just two. Um, one of them comes from the Pregnancy Care Center, and he's awesome. Um, we really like having males and females come in to be able to share their experience to help um, 
all different students you know, identify with a different adult. And he talks a lot about healthy relationship choices, talks a lot about the difference between infatuation and love, and then he actually comes in and shows all the scary STD pictures on a different day. So he comes and, and serves a lot of purposes in our class. We also have somebody, a volunteer, come from our local domestic violence shelter. It's called Harmony House and share about her experience with domestic violence and how to get help. I don't know if everyone has access to something like this, but here in Springfield we have something called a risky relationship simulation. It's really cool. Uh, the kids get to, the person comes in and does a whole setup in our classroom, and the kids get an identity and they move from booth to booth, and they get to do a real life walkthrough of what a person or a teen who experiences dating violence, you know, what that might look like and how, what the outcome was and how the outcome could be different if they get help. And those come from real life scenarios. So there are three different reasons, in my opinion, why we collaborate. The first, we really want kids to get information from multiple sources so they know it's not just the crazy lady at the front of the room telling us this information. It's a variety of people from different um, organizations and you know these are the things that work and these are the things that we want to keep you safe from. Also if we can help our kids make contact with someone in the community from, from a resource that they might need in the future, it really increases the likelihood that they're going to take advantage of that. If I just say, if I have a kid disclose to me that they're experiencing abuse or they need help of some kind and I say, well here's this number, call this place, that's pretty overwhelming and kind of scary, especially for a teenager. However, if we've had a person from that organization come in and talk to them and I say, hey, remember Bridget? Remember when she was here? She works with this organization and she's one of those people you can call and let's call her together and let's go get some help for you. And it's a lot less scary when they've already made a connection. And then finally, you know, if you can take advantage of existing programs, it's just a great, um, great way to uh, promote other organizations and um, take advantage of that. So moving on, um, in our next slide, oh, I thought, uh, I don't know if we have enough time, but um, if there were some people listening who had some community collaborations that they take advantage of, and you want to type those in and share those, um, you know, it's, a, it's a really great when, when other people have ideas, you can sometimes, you know, spurs an idea on for yourself. So I don't know, do we want to take a minute to do that? Sure. Or? Catherine, let's just take a couple seconds if people will type in the question box um, any okay. ideas they might have about collaborations or any that you already collaborate with in the community. We'll take a few minutes for that. Well, someone has said um, definitely the women's shelter of Long Beach, mm -hmm. some community clinics that are in the area. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> juvenile pro yeah, probation that's a good one the juvenile probation mm -hmm. family and consumer science teachers mm -hmm. sounds great and of course yeah. you had put the police department oh the stepping stones mm -hmm. program with the YWCA well, oh yeah that's a good idea the sheriff's department the college safety officers health department well, y'all have a lot of good ideas. Officers. That's a mm -hmm. really good one. Because the, like you said before, with the, uh, the number of college students mm -hmm. that experience that, if you can catch them in high school or even in college and help them That's right. identify those things. Yeah, it's that, important. Yeah, that churches, they can mm -hmm. do that. So, yeah, so gr that's great. A lot yeah. of different so I just ideas. I wanted to give uh, yeah, an opportunity for people to share in case it spurs ideas for other people. Um, even for myself, I might take advantage of some of those. Oh, and that I like this one too, lawyers, because you know they see a different side of things. So that's a that's a good thing that's too. That's a really good idea. Because mm -hmm. some kids say, well, if you get a restraining order, then um, nothing really happens, and and they don't recognize the importance of building a case or mm -hmm. you know being really consistent in doing that. And yeah, that could be a great way, mm -hmm. great way to help. All right, awesome. I'm going to change the slide for you. And um, Thank if you. I know there's been a couple questions about like the the uh, simulation project. We will make sure that yeah. those questions, if they're not answered at the end, that we get Catherine your information so she can answer you directly. Mm -hmm. Okay? All yeah, righty. It's a really neat program. I just want to make sure we get to the last few things here, and I can mm -hmm. share another example of that if people would like. Okay, so um, finally, <clears throat> going through a lesson, we, we do this for about two weeks in my class. We just finished it actually. Uh, we take a few weeks going over the 
or a few class periods going over the Love Notes curriculum. We have our guest speakers come, and then we, we wrap it up with a student project. And the purpose of our assignment is to help see what the what information the students have learned, what have they retained. Um, also, research shows that an excellent way to learn or to really solidify information, um, to teach it through activity. So we tell our students that the Hello? Sometimes other teachers and if you go to the next slide, I example I blacked out the students. Uh, what one of them? Go to the next. It'll pop up. You know, it's small on your screen there. But you can see that picture of her. So the, the first one is the you know the three outside pages, and then the three inside pages. I'm including a lot of information. Okay, so just to wrap up before we get to our question time, I just wanted to end by saying that in my opinion, uh, you know, number one, I'm fortunate the entire semester with all with my students to go over this information, but I think it's so important for all youth, not just ones that are in that at-risk category, to learn health relationship skills, to learn how to communicate, to learn to recognize problem signs, to know how to problem solve, because it helps them not only in their personal relationships, but with success in school, with success in work. Students, you know, um, science is so important, math is so important, all these things, you need them to be successful. But, you know, this class is equally, if not more important, because it's something you're And the uh, times or, or personal it's important. Just the other day, uh, we just finished our dangerous. I have lost audio. I'm not hardly.
important to that. Hello? Hello? <laughs> Is do we have any? I apologize. Else? My I have lost I lost some audio there and again I like on the last three or four slides. So I apologize. I guess that what that's what happens at five o'clock on <laughs> almost at five o'clock on Eastern time in North Carolina. But <laughs> I apologize for that. So we do have some questions. Are we ready for the questions? Okay. okay. I think so. I think Great. We're ready. Thank you so much. Um, one of the questions is, that Sue has is if you only had one hour with eighth grade students per year, mm. you know, mm. like during domestic violence month, for example, or dating violence month, mm -hmm. what would you suggest to cover and keep it like really memorable for them? Whew, yeah. One hour a year. Yeah. That's not, <laughs> that's not a whole lot of time. Um, let me see. Well, in my opinion, I guess, I think, especially in terms of this particular topic, all the healthy relationship stuff is so important. But just from the numbers we saw a moment ago, you know, the 1.5 million students who experience abuse, I think it is really important for kids, even middle schoolers, because this is where it starts to begin, is to be able to identify different signs of abuse and, and then also what do you do to get help? You know, how do you talk about it? You know, teaching them things to say um, or be able to be aware of how they should be treating one another because, um, because it is something that happens a lot. So uh, what do you do? Dixie, do you have any other suggestion for one hour? Well, I think your point about the importance of the topic of dating or domestic violence, um, and and even though they're eighth graders, is is really important. I, I get. I would only add that the question to ask yourself is, um, what is the goal of that one hour? Is it to help them to identify with who they are, um, and empower them then you might start at the beginning and you know this is added in high the rest is added in high school so that you know they see how how much power they have in making decisions how many teens believe they have any power in making decisions let's start right. there you know that just doesn't even happen mm -hmm. and then um, I would so I would do that and or if the other if the goal is safe safety in relationship. I think that um, the dangerous love or dangerous signs in in communication would, would be the way to go. So I, I guess that's the question I think they have to ask themselves first. I think so. You know, I think with both of those topics, one icebreaker, what we do on my very, very first day of class, the first page of our workbook, it's what goals do you have for your life and that's a big question for an mm -hmm. eighth grader but you know what kind of relationship do you want to have what do you want it to look like and mm -hmm. hopefully they'll be able to say you know that it's loving you know people mm -hmm. are nice to each other putting those ideas in their head that this is the goal of what you want to have and then you could go into these are things that are not going to get you there <laughs> or you know these are the things that you shouldn't have right so, right right okay Catherine yes, I know I agree I'm sorry. Next question. Um, yeah, Catherine, I know that you mentioned that you did the red and white flag game. Do you do just do you do one flag or do every does every student get a red and a white flag or how 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 many flags do you do it or do you do it by group? How does that mm -hmm. work out in your classroom? Yeah, I'll tell you the way I do it. I think it could be done any number of ways. But the way I do it, uh, my classes are typically pretty small, so I have 15 or so. So I'll either break them into two or three. Um, so if I do two groups, then you know either they are in comp and they decide as a group to raise the red or white flag, and they do it. You know the two groups compete, so whoever raises their flag first, you know if they're correct, they get <coughs> candidate. You know you can add, you can add mm -hmm. it however you want. Um, another way that I do it is I'll have two groups and they get into two lines. And the, the person at the front of the line answers the question with the red or white flag. And once they've done their question, they hand the flags to the next person and they go to the back of the line. 
and then that person answers a question, red or white flag, and then they hand the flags to the next person and go to the back of the line. And so I'll have two lines, um, you know, playing against each other. But there's any number of ways you could do it where everyone, it's, and I just use um, construction paper and cut out, you know, a red triangle and a white triangle and they hold those up. So, you know, it could be an actual flag, you know, you can do it however you want to. But um, the Dibble Institute provides with the Love Notes curriculum, I think it's like 30 or 40 different scenarios mm -hmm. that you can read to them and then tells you, you know, if it's a red or white flag. Mm -hmm. right, and, very good. and the templates for the flags and you know uh, the materials list and all of that is listed in the lessons too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was all provided. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah, they do a great job of explaining activities. And I think there's been another question. We know that the webinar was specifically on how uh, teens can, def you know, name and and identify for themselves dating violence um, through mm -hmm. healthy relationship education. Do either of you have any research or knowledge about healthy relationship education actually preventing domestic violence or lowering those numbers? It's a question that has been asked. Hmm. That is a good question. Uh, I don't have anything off the top of my head. I know I will say that for myself personally, I do surveys with all of my students. Um, and of course, that's not, you know, this isn't definitive, you know, research necessarily. But with all the classes that I do, um, even if it's just the workshops, I do like a pre and post test. And I also ask some questions about what learned, you know, why is this useful? You know, do, have you made any changes in your life? And, you know, I, I give them these surveys. And um, I've gotten really overwhelmingly positive results. Mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of kids say things like, you know, I did before, I didn't know that this was a bad thing, and now I know, or, you know, now I feel confident that I can solve a problem or, you know, work on a relationship it, where before I didn't know. So just in my own personal experience, I feel like it is very helpful. Um, I don't know if, Dixie, if you had any other answer to that. Well, I do know that um, when we talked about the risk factors and the protective factors, there's some research there that's connected, and I can look for um, some cited sources for you if I have that, you know, that question is going to pop up in our survey, and I'll know who asked it, and then I'll be able to follow up with you. Um, we do know, in fact, this morning I just had the same discussion with a member from Upward Bound in Pennsylvania. You know, we do know that healthy relationship education, its impact is to help them, one, define what healthy is and what unhealthy is. Mm -hmm. And then, two, to give them skills about um, exiting a relationship or changing their pattern to get out of that situation or mm -hmm. their expectations of a relationship. So its impact is, is definitely there. Statistically, I need a little time to kind of pull that together for you. Okay, and that's something that we could actually post. We are going to be posting the recording of the webinar, the PowerPoints, and <clears throat> excuse me, and the PowerPoints, and we can post that information as well beside the um, recording. So that would be great. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to do one last you, question. I'm sorry. Oh, sure. Well, th that's fine. I just thought, um, I know you had mentioned something about uh, people asking about the relationship simulation, but if you have another question, we can do that too. Yes, the the question that we have, and this is probably for Dixie, that I think it's important, is that they want to know if the Love Notes curriculum is evidence based. Yes, it is evidence based. Uh, the Love Notes curri curriculum is an adaptation came from Relationship Smarts Plus which is on the evidence-based programs and practices, the National Registry. It was evaluated at Auburn University. Love Notes is in the process of being um, evaluated at the University of Louisville, and I hope I have the right university. <laughs> um, and the results of that will be published within the next, I think it's within the next two years. Um, yes, they are on the National Registry for Evidence-Based Programs and Practices. 
Great. Thank you so much. And you can get more information. Actually, you can um, download a free sample lesson of our Love Notes curriculum uh, from our website at dibbleinstitute.org. All righty. You want to continue, um, Dixie? Yes. I think we are about at the end here. Okay. <clears throat> and then if you place an order today um, on anything from uh, the Dibble Institute website or within the next 30 days of the airing of this webinar, you'll get free shipping. And you'll just want to place webinar as the code in your checkout. And Catherine, I would just again like to thank you for being here today and for sharing uh, your expertise and experience and thank you for the work that you do in your community. It's very important and makes a difference in the lives of these young people. Uh, we can connect or you can connect with Dibble Institute in a variety of ways uh, through our website, you subscribing to our newsletter which is great because it gives you information on upcoming webinars and research and grant opportunities and so much more. Um, and uh, we follow us on Facebook, uh, LinkedIn. And the webinar, as we said at the beginning, will be archived and should be available to you in three business days. And then also after we end the webinar today, there is a brief survey of just a couple of questions that we would really appreciate you answering because your feedback is very important to us. You can always contact either Kathy or I, our first names at dibbleinstitute.org. And next month in November, Dibble is going digital and so you will definitely want to hear about what that's going to be, how we're taking our curriculum and making them uh, both available in hard copy but also in digital and what that will look like and who might be able to use that. And thank everyone for being here today and again if you have any questions feel free to contact us. Have a great day. Thank you.